Hi class, today we are going to write a code on permutation calculation with command line input. So please pay attention how to use command line input. Command line input is basically an alternative to scanf. If you already use command line input, you don't have to use scanf in your programming already. And vice versa. Meaning if you already have scanf, there's no point to have command line parameter in your coding. And what is command line parameter? We shall see in the slide afterward. Before that, let us revise the formula for permutation. What is permutation? Permutation is the number of ways to arrange a portion of items from a larger group of items. So in mathematical uh, term, it is the number of ways we can arrange our item from n items and the formula is this one and PR written like this in maths and the definition is n factorial over or divided by n minus r factorial you can expand the numerator and the denominator like this and without going too much into the maths detail you will get that the NPR is equivalent to multiplication of N starting with N with N minus 1, N minus 2 until N minus R plus 1 because all the smaller terms in the factorial will be cancelled out each other until exactly at N minus R. So what is left is only until N minus R plus 1. So we are going to write this formula in our C, C++ code. So command line parameter means the user is going to give the value, the input value that normally is given through scanf, but now it is given directly at the command line, the same line in the command prompt that we key in the program name, which means the input is already there waiting to be processed by the program even before the program is up and running. When the user press the enter key over here, then only the program NPR will be running and the two parameters in this case, the value of N and the value of R will be given to the program and it prints out the value of NPR equal to 120 in this case, 6P3 equal to 100. 20. So, in using command line parameter, there are a few things you need to know. You need to know about array because the value of the parameter are given as array. You need to know how many items in the array. You will be given a built-in variable named argc, which in this case equal to 3. Why 3? Because we have 1, 2, 3 parameter being key in at command line. That's the reason why we have ARGC equal to 3 in this case. And the array is the array of token, meaning how many words do we enter at command line. In this case, we have 1, 2, 3. So there are three elements in the array. The array name is ARGV, stands for argument vector. This one is argument count. So since we only have three elements in the array, we have ARGV0, which is the name of the software or the program itself. ARGV1 is the first parameter following the program name. And ARGV index 2 is the next one. And so on, as many as the number of parameters we have in the command line that we key in. Let us write this code. Okay, start your... C, C++, Win32 console project. And from the auto-generated code, the first thing that you need to put in the main function are the declarations of ARGC and ARGV. The first is ARGC. It is an integer, argument count. Next is ARGV is an array of string actually, but it is not C++ string object, but C string. 
So it is an array of pointer to character. So ARGB array. It is an array of pointer to character. This is actually equivalent or almost identical to C++ string. Then we need to quickly grab the command line parameter that are given to the program. We need to keep them as string first because all command line parameter given to any program in Windows system are given as string. So in order to use string, you need to add in your stdafx.h inclusion of string header. So you need to include string. Make sure you add the string without dot h. The one with dot h is meant for C only. So since we are adding this string so that we can use string object in C++, we have to add the one without dot h. Save it. And then you can close stdafx.h. And since we are not specifying any namespace in, in our code, we need to put std to tell that our string comes from the standard string. So std colon colon string. The first value given to our program is n and we want to tell that this is n in string form. In my practice, if I'm declaring a variable with string type, I put str at the end of the variable name. So in this case, we also initialize the string with the first parameter is given to the program, which is argv1. Then we need to grab the next parameter into another string, r string into, sorry, from argv2. The second argument given to the program at command line. Then we can straight away apply the formula. Actually, for this kind of formula, you need to test the validity of the values. That is, if n is equal to or more than r, because it doesn't make sense if r is greater than n. But to make this coding easy, I'm not going to do that testing. So we straight away go to the for loop. What is the purpose of this for loop? The purpose of this for loop is to perform the multiplication of n until n minus r plus 1. If you can recall from the slide just now. So we have c, we declare c as the loop parameter and we want to get the value of n but now n is in integer not the string that we get before so that is the initial value of c then the condition to terminate sorry the condition to continue looping is as long as c is greater than or equal to n integer minus r integer plus 1. We will declare an integer and r integer afterward. And if you can see here, the condition is as long as r is greater than or equal to, which indicates that the stepping will be going backward. So we put c minus minus. Let us declare an integer and r integer. This one we quickly give the value of an integer, which is the conversion from string form of n in n string into integer. So what is the conversion function? It is string to integer. You cannot find in the intelligence list because you need to also specify the standard namespace. Now you can see story. So converting from what? We are converting from n string. Then you can copy and paste to get r integer. 
then we just perform the computation. The multiplication will straight away give you NPR. This is multiplication upon a value which you need to put x3 is equal of c. c will get the value from n integer until n integer minus r integer plus 1. So we are multiplying c on npr. And of course, we have to declare integer npr. And in this case, we have to initialize with 1. Initialization is important because we are using this operator, meaning we, we are accumulating multiplication on NPR. But we cannot initialize with zero because if you initialize with zero, all multiplication will become zero. So we need to start with one. And after the multiplication, we should get the value of NPR. Then we do a print F to display that. It is percent D because it is integer. NPR only defined on integer. Next, we run the program. If we run like this, without any parameter, it will crash because this program is expecting two command line parameter. When you see this, you know that you are missing at least one of the required parameter. So about, do again with the parameter that the program is expecting. For example, n equal to six and r equal to three, we should get NPR equal to 120. So we get a program running. You can test whether this program can calculate with other values of n and r. So that is it for command line argument of NPR calculation.